Hey guys, Sadaka here. So I just wanted to show you my land and what we've been up to. It's been raining. This is the creek. Back there is our first tent we first started out at. Um, the property goes all the way past that tent and there's a pond over there and a waterfall. Um, my land goes maybe about 300, 400 feet up to that ridge up there, which you can't really see through the trees. Um, yeah, this is it. That's a tree that we're shelling and going to turn into a bridge, actually. Um, yeah, it just keeps going. <laughs> Lots of land. I live here now. This is our shed. <clears throat> this is going to be my herb garden. This whole space right here. Everything's still pretty rudimentary, but we have been doing a lot of work on well, some people. Oh, that's, that's my house now. Um, shed. We've got some little greenhouses right here where I'm starting my seedlings so we can grow our own food. This is actually our little altar space. Well, it's not little. It's got like everything. <laughs> and we started making a moss garden with it. This little space for reflection and all of that. Burning of the incenses. Um, fire pit, nothing too extraordinary there. This is actually a water filter um, to use. Uh, um, my partner made it himself, and we put water in the top, and it filters through the two, three buckets, and then comes out. The creek water is incredibly clean, but we're not stupid enough to just drink it by itself, obviously. There are things that need to be filtered out of it. <clears throat> this is... Oh, that's a compost bin. <clears throat> this is where the first vegetable garden is going to be. This whole cleared out space right here. Um, we did plant some things in it already, some seeds. Not exactly sure how that's going to go. The soil out here is incredibly rich and amazing, but um, we're trying different methods, as in starting some seedlings indoors, but then also just kind of like throwing things in there and see what the heck happens. This is our main entrance, sort of. You can see the path that goes all the way up the hill where we uh, put down hay. So that's a thing. And then this is the fun part, other fun part. <clears throat> all these trees are lying down right now because we've taken them down and we're actually using them to build fences. So this is the most impressive part, I guess, right now. <clears throat> a little chicken coop. And there's a fence that we made out of natural twigs, trees, and all of that. And it's super cute. So this is a <laughs> chicken coop that my partner made from uh, found pallets. Basically, we just go to hardware stores and different places and they put pallets out there for people to take sometimes they even put a sign that says free firewood or whatever so this is where the chickens are gonna live wasn't that cute that's so super cute it's like freaking adorable so <clears throat> we've got that this is what i i love about this kind of stuff it's like we're not doing complete bushcraft but we are just trying to utilize the materials that we have available to us and this whole area is now fenced in for chickens. And we just finished that recently. It didn't actually take too long once you get a good rhythm going. It's not that big of a deal. But um, my land basically stops about here. But there's five acres this way. <clears throat> and after the end of my property, there's five acres that way. And absolutely nobody around anywhere. There's no houses. There's no other farms. There's nothing, just just us. So, not really worried about having, you know, <clears throat> problems from other people or whatever. Uh, we have met some of our neighbors, one of them, <clears throat> he and his wife, uh, in their 80s. And they just have, like, 40 acres right here in a big area that used to be a lake, but... Um, their dam broke. They had made a dam to make a lake, and now it's just a little trickling stream that runs through their property and is, you know, our creek eventually. <clears throat> so that's basically the gist of it. Um, what we're trying to do is just be completely self-sustaining. 
<clears throat> you know, it's uh, been difficult for me to figure out exactly what I'm supposed to do in these situations. Like, I have this kind of stuff taking up my time, but then also all this other free time. And <clears throat> I just feel like the stuff that I used to be doing in my own personal practice and making videos for people and all that kind of stuff didn't really fit in. Now, all of a sudden, I've got the extra free time because um, my partner is going back to work in a kitchen just so we can have some, you know, funds available to put into the farm. But the really great part about it is that we don't have to pay for water. We don't have to pay for electricity. <clears throat> We're completely socked up on food for the foreseeable future. If we needed to be, we're still buying, you know, fresh things at the grocery store. And eventually <clears throat> we want to be so self-sustaining that we don't have to buy any food. You know, that's really the ultimate point. This is both of our retirements, essentially. Like we're, we're set. Um, <clears throat> as it goes, once we get things in the ground, um, then, you know, it's totally open for people to come camp and just hang out or camp and work and I will provide meals, and then once we're done with work, we hang out and have fires and play music and do the things, you know. Of course, me being me, I always want to have a spiritual bent on everything and have different ceremonies at different points of the year and bring people together for different workshops and things like that, like group meditations and healing and all that jazz. Um, but my partner, you know, just to tell you about him, he's just as crazy and witchy as I am. So it, <laughs> it's not like it doesn't fit. It's just that his version of that is something even less formal with, you know, fire spinners and, and crazy music. So that's all well and good. Uh, eventually we'd like to open the whole thing up for festivals and stuff like that. There's a music festival that happens out here in this area of Virginia, um, that we're in called Rooster Walk, I think. It'd be a bunch of bands and people camp in the area. And so we were thinking about opening it up for people to just come down here, camp for the, you know, three or four day festival or whatever it is. And you know, have a place to, to chill out and be safe. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. We might eventually open it up to woofing.com, which is like a site where people can go and find a place to stay. You do a work exchange, basically, where people would come here and work in exchange for food and a place to stay. And basically, you just help us out on the farm. Oh, so it's not much, um, considering, you know where it has to go but this is essentially a 30-year plan <laughs> so <clears throat> if we're only being here a few months i think we've done pretty damn well um i'm gonna be here essentially by myself now for the you know for a good portion of the day most days and i gotta get my act together with everything that i have to do around here but at the same time it's like <clears throat> I've also got time to do my meditation practices and all my spiritual stuff, and I'm gonna start, gonna start making the videos again and see what I can come up with. Magical lamp, I know it's gorgeous.